Hey everybody, it is Vinny and Craig and no other people. It's B D along with Craig and no other people. As we are here to review the biggest wrestling show of all time, AEW All In. I, I did get up to watch Zero Hour. We saw Hook defeat Jack Perry to regain the FTW title. Jack's uh, second match of the evening. What was he first? Uh, his skirmish with Punk in the back. Okay, I was going to lead, get to the yes. Jack brings the camera very close to him, slaps the windshield, and says, It's real glass, cry me a river. Oh. Jack got backstage after calling out Punk. On the biggest wrestling show of the year, <laughs> who, who would have thunk there would have been uh, a receipt for this backstage? And uh, something happened, and you can all listen to Brian and Dave. I'm sure they have all the details on I'm that. I'm sure. Punk is hated in the UK, apparently, and other places, possibly this under this roof. Fan had a sign in the front row, um, best in the world at being a B. It's fantastic. It was very, very good. Very well paced. The training of the finishers and then doing each other's finishers was a nice touch. And just, uh, hey, what do you expect from two of the best tag teams in the world? When the Skiers came out, my wife had just sat down and brought lunch. Meatball subs. Thank you. No way. And she looks up just in time to see the Skiers sticking in Moxley's head. She pushed her plate away <laughs> and it's like, okay. I would not have been able to resist the urge to go to the kitchen and get either <laughs> chopsticks or toothpicks or something and sure. just stick it into her meatball. <laughs> so she's reminded of that. Because I am a terrible, terrible person. Well, Nick Wayne making his uh, pay-per-view debut. He attempts to kill a dinosaur with a skateboard. And then Luchasaurus picked him up and carried him to back, apparently to feed him to his young. Luchasaurus is a great big nest, and all the babies are the baby from dinosaurs. You got to do the uh, eggs that are cracked in a jagged fashion. We got to get a show, dude. We got to start a promotion. <sighs> I'm going to start writing this down. The, the, the Dinosaur Wrestling Federation. It was a good wrestling match. It was not an all-time classic. I actually love this match. All right. Maybe it was Jer an all-time classic. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but it was very, very good. They pointed at each other, these tag team champions and competitors, and with fire in their eyes, they both scream, Double clothesline! And they hit each other with a double clothesline. And the place goes absolutely apeshit. In all of Cena's years, he never called a spot this loud. The referee counts three, and it's not like Adam kicks out at 3.1. Max has him down for another two or three seconds afterwards. MJF beat him with a superior wrestling technique. So the crowd is honestly not sure what to make of this. Stun silence. I think they all thought that we thought that the kingdom or Roddy would get involved and somebody, somebody would turn to the other. I was waiting for the kingdom and Roddy mm -hmm. to actually help MJF. They do the hug to end all hugs. <laughs> You've heard of the mega powers exploding? This is the baby powers imploding. Place goes crazy. Friendship wins in the end. There was not one point watching this show where I didn't feel like I was watching one of the biggest shows of all time. Home run and a huge success for EW here. Tyler Mosley wants to know, when does the Vinny solo podcast begin? Anytime you want. I'm Crazy waiting for way. people to take over. I'm so happy that you guys did well without me. <laughs> There's too much of me. I'm, and I'm saying that. That's for sure. All right, Grady, let's do some reporting or whatever. Uh-oh. Am I ready? I don't know. Are you? <laughs> you tell minute. me. Oops. No, you're not. I only watched one match, and it wasn't WWE, was it? It was AEW? It was AEW. I looked at that. that I never seen, I guess, the biggest crowd they ever had. Yes. The biggest crowd right. anyone ever had. I watched Chris Jericho versus A-S-P-R-E-A-Y. Osprey. It was Osprey, a, I believe she spelled. It was a long, long match, so, but I didn't write much down about it. <laughs> So, that's that. Hmm. Wow. Excellent review. I feel like I was there. We must have grown wheat. And once a year, the thrashing crew... Wheat. Was it wheat or weed? Wheat. Okay. Wheat, wheat. Bye, guys. Bye, Granny. Yeah. Shall we? <laughs> yeah, what are you waiting for? We watched NWA How did 11. you do the show without me? They debuted a character named Cobain. Whose gimmick, as God is my witness, is I love suicide. And heroin. In August of 2002, Kurt Cobain was very much alive. What? Yes. 
Yeah. He had a year and a half to go. Oh, my God. No, you idiot. April 5, 1994. You idiot. Yeah, he, this he is, died he'd been we dead for school. nine oh. years of suicide. Yeah, oh, 94. you're right. I am a complete idiot. You dummy. It's an elimination four-way time match. Yes. Where the winner gets to be the last team in an upcoming gauntlet for the gold. So it's no, it's a Royal Rumble type match, but the person that got the yeah, they made it very, very clear that it's an over the top battle royal at the beginning because whenever they're throwing each other over at the end, (laughs) how the fuck did you do this show when I was gone? (laughs) God, John Moxley versus Commander. He has no problems feeding all of Commander's Lucha High spots. What the hell are you wearing, by the way? A uh, new shirt. You like it? It's just weird. You're wearing an orange button up shirt. You couldn't possibly have just woken up and decided to wear that today. I feel like it's becoming a pattern. Shows after AW pay-per-views are almost like filler. Well, the problem with that theory is that this is a go-home show for another pay-per-view. Yeah. It's not just their second pay-per-view in eight days. I did the math somewhere in here. It's like the seventh AEW show in ten days. Like, who is not sick of this company by this point? (laughs) As great as it's been, there's a limit to how much you could possibly watch. It is FTR and the Young Bucks versus Bullet Club Gold. At the pay-per-view. You know, there's no stakes. No. There's no stip. There's no reason to care. It's a it's a dynamite match. Renee then interviews Tony Storm, who appears to be high on Valium, which is appropriate for the gimmick she's doing, because there was a lot of Valium in old Hollywood going around. You almost never see anything with the, uh, the kingdom. And so, you know, MJF and Adam Cole is the hottest thing in the company. And uh, and so people are like, oh, man, you know, what, what's going on here? But if you watch this segment, this was an excellent segment. They did a multi-week tournament to determine a number one contender for Joe's title. Huh. And it was, in fact, won by Shane Taylor. Okay, great. Every single tournament match happened on Honor Club. It was never mentioned a single time ever on AEW television. Tony Khan does not seem to believe in the women's division. Correct! Someone finally figured it out! This thing was uh, slapdash thrown together, this whole show, at the last second, okay? Tony even admitted it on Twitter. Like, a lot of shit went down, so we're going to just throw it all out and start over again. But I heard, man, good morale. Good morale in the back. Everybody, it was, it was good vibes this yeah. Wednesday, even though it was such a, uh, you know, whatever. So, make of that what you will. I did like when they proclaimed it the house of ass. Baby. And Excalibur calmly mutters, that's where MGF is in Amsterdam. <laughs> I didn't catch that. <laughs> this is the third time that shit has gone to hell in a handbasket and John Moxley's had to step in and just save everything. That seems low, honestly. And Moxley comes down to the ring and he jumps in the ring and he fucking slaps Orange and Orange slaps him and they go face to face and I thought, God damn it, where's my fucking wallet? The last fucking 20 minutes of this show, holy shit. It was so great. It's the Julius Creed show. This guy is a freak, and this is like his freakiest performance. I don't think we've seen before the part where he has one guy at an ankle lock and at the same time uses his other arm, singular, to powerbomb the other opponent. That was nuts. Then we had an ad for those absolutely hideous NFL team championship belts you can buy. Every NFL team available unless you happen to be a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. (laughs) <laughs> that is that is absolutely fucking incredible. That is amazing. Crowd absolutely loves Lola Vice. She is very awesome. Well, you know, her. Lola's got an Instagram. You can figure out why they chant for her. But yes, she's supposed to be a heel. And like she tags in, they just go crazy for her. And so his plan from beyond the grave to give them this message is not to come to them in a vision and go, you fuckers need to start from scratch. You know, quit chasing women. His His plan in the afterlife is to scratch the shit out of them. I'm not even, it's not even a scratch. They're 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 charred open. Yeah, I I I don't know. Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio do a promo. They point out that Dragon Lee looks like Batman. He really does. This is very fair. Every wrestler who's ever stepped in a ring has tried to run the ropes and done the bit where you duck too low and your head slips under the rope and comes back. How the fuck did the you ever do that? You were ten feet tall. I'm also very clumsy. Okay. Nathan Fraser is not 10 feet tall, but he was traveling 10,000 miles an hour when he hits these ropes and his head slips under and comes back at 10,000 miles an hour. I thought his head was going to come off. I shrieked so loud when that happened. I'm going out. And they're inviting her out for a wild night of the town is one JC Jane. Yes. As Vega Ridge says here, Jace you. 
It's going to be oh, my new nice. favorite yeah. storyline here in I NXT. Like that. I like that. But they are very, very strongly teasing that Becky Lynch is going to show up in NXT. My guess it would be next week. So I guess we'll find out. Best NXT episode of the year. I love that show. NXT Man on the Rise. 